Hello, hello. Hopefully everyone's well. Um, oh my God, I just want to say this as a JPEG. Uh, if anyone's around, say hello. Uh, I'm trying to get my tweet out. Rex, how are you? Just got to grab my headphones. And then we are good. How goes, Prax? I audio focus must uh, tab out when you... There we go. Oh no. Oh dear, what happened? Oh, I was like, what happened? Is locked. All right. Let's go. Warning. First bite is ready 18 plus for strong language, violence, potential player death, blood and gore optional, sexual scenes including consensual kink and BDSM, supernatural emotional manipulation, and other content that some players may find disturbing. Some scenes may contain mild flashing images. Player discretion is advised. First by Games presents. Okay, I did not need the flashing. Uh oh, hey, Nix. Nothing but darkness surrounds me. Close my eyes. Yes, we're trying to blink it away, but there's just nothingness. Void. I'm alone. 
Where am I? What am I doing here? How did I even get here? I tried moving my legs. Nothing. As hard as I try to run away, my body refuses to cooperate. I try my arms next. Frozen. Before I can try anything else, a light appears in the distance. There's something else flickering right next to that light. I can barely make it out, but what little I can see is horrifying. Glowing red eyes. Bright white fangs. Blood dripping from sharp talons. Hey, Berwick. In an instant, they multiply, dancing around in the shadows. They laugh, a cacophony of demonic giggles, they skitter towards me at an inhuman speed. Their movement's chaotic. I'm helpless as they close in around me. An aroma of metallic sweetness infiltrates my nostrils, and I'm surrounded. Trapped. Then they pounce, claws tearing deep into my muscles as they grab hold of me, teeth sinking into my flesh. I try to scream, but no sound escapes. Part 1. Hunger. What thing's next? Ah! My eyes rolled open as I wake up in a cold sweat. It was a dream. Just a dream. Closer to a nightmare. Depends on how you feel about being torn apart by vampires, I guess. My heart feels like it's about to burst out of my chest. My mind races over the lingering memory of what I saw. I quickly scan my surroundings to make sure I'm actually in my room. And also, alive. Everything is in its rightful place. My laptop is asking me if I'd like to continue watching Death of the Dead. At this point, I should know better than to fall asleep watching horror movies, but I was lured in at the prospect of two hot characters kissing. I just rested my eyes for a little too long. Hey y'all. Oh, thank you. I am doing my best. I'm actually gonna hide this bar because it's in the way of the dialogue. Oops. So ridiculous part of my brain holds a kernel of hope that one day I'll enter a deliciously dark world of the unknown and unexplainable. But for now, I'm stuck here. Even my dreams won't let me near what I want. And now these thoughts are once again racing through my mind, and now it's absolutely fruitless. I try to fall back asleep, but I try nonetheless. I go through every trick in the book. Breathing exercises, counting sheep, writing erotic fanfiction in my head, decidedly unhelpful. Surprise, surprise, I'm still awake. I'm blankly staring at my ceiling. Great job, me. I sigh, pushing the covers off my body. There's no point in staying in bed. I grab my phone from my bedside table, bracing myself as I check the time. 3 a.m.? Once again, my body's betrayed me by falling to this disgusting, habitual cycle. Have a nightmare, wake up, stay awake, rinse, repeat. Hey, Scry. Hey, Adder. If I don't say hi, me, this is probably because I'm reading this dialogue. <laughs> Defeated. I yawn, stretch my bones as I stand, and make my way to my bedroom mirror. I drag my fingers down my cheeks and glare at my reflection, illuminated by the dangling fairy lights. What's your first name? Ooh, should I go with Tanya or Cypher? Good wife. 
We're smooching vampires. Oh, that's too close to a Mel. I gotta go with it. For the Dragon Age fans in the house. Pronouns. Ah, the game asks pronouns. Uh, so we have three options. They, them, she, her, he, him. Oh no, that was back. How do I go back? I hit the wrong one. Uh, I hit the wrong one. Let's go with green. I take a deep breath. I goofed. I might have to redo this. Sorry, I'm really thrown off because I goofed. I goofed. I don't know if I can, if I have to go back or if I have a chance to change it. I mean, also, I could just play as he, him. It's not like it's the end of the world. I love the fact that this has the titles underlined and in the proper formatting. Let's see. I didn't save yet, so. I guess I'm a dude for this playthrough. Oh. It's an erotica section lovingly dubbed the Cryptic Coitus Corner. It surprised me to see it become the most popular part of my website. You talk. I'll admit, I'm no Bill Shakespeare. It warms my heart to see people coming back from my wide and varied selection of supernatural erotica. Again, if you're just joining us, this game does have an NSFW uh, content warning. Who knew that horny horror was like catnip to people all over the world and not just me? I... The, wow, game... Unfortunately, I'm stuck on my latest would-be masterpiece, and all I have is a potentially questionable title. Mum. I'm not reading that out loud. It's a work in progress. I'll wave, I wave it off. I fig I'll figure it out later. An update cryptic code coitus. Cryptic coitus corner. When inspiration hits. Hey, actual factual. How are you? Hey, Melba. Uh, you came into me trying to bang vampires, basically, but I'm not. I'm not a vampire yet, and I haven't really found the vampires yet. So we're getting there. I lazily scan my room, trying to hit that motivation jackpot, and I pause on my window. The moon is full and bright against the starless sky, an excellent setting for some ominous entertainment. Hmm. Maybe I need to get out, go for a walk, see what early morning Portland offers me. I've been in Portland, and I've been there in the middle of the night. Don't do this. It's weird. There's enough weirdness happening during the day in the city, so I'm sure something's bled over into the twilight hours. Okay, I did not plan that. I am playing this through the first time. I did not know the dialogue would say that. Just so we're clear. I did not plan that. With my mind made up, I mosey to my closet. What does one wear for a witching hour stroll? All black like my soul. Comfort is key. Dressed to the nines. 
We gotta be comfy. It's 3 a.m. I love voodoo donuts. One thing I do miss. This is the middle of the night. I don't need fashion, but I demand comfort. I find the comfiest pants and the biggest sweatshirt I own and slide into them. Bliss. This is me. In any form. I pose in front of the mirror, blowing a kiss to Mirror Cipher. Looking good. I guess I don't get to say what I look like. A little buzz with excitement as I gather my bearings. The most radical thing I've done lately is quit my gray tone office job and pick up shifts at the local coffee shop to supplement the income from my website. It's comforting knowing that there are others like me who have this undeniable attraction to things that go bump in the night, despite the monotony of my day-to-day. -day. It's easier to exist when you blend in and scroll away any untoward interests. It avoids awkward conversations, and no one's caught onto my deep, dark secrets. Yet. There was a time where I felt my desires for the supernatural were something to be ashamed of. So the game is Monster Fucker 101. This is what we're doing. So for all of the monster fuckers in my Discord, this is for you. And while maybe they are in polite society, I don't spend too many brain rotting hours in an office cubicle. I decided I would lean into the delusion to bring some color back into my life. <laughs> wow, Sim Wife, wow. I see you. Most people don't see the value in that sort of thing, and that's fine. But I can't help it. Something about the occult excites me more than anything else. It's always been that way. I gave up trying to fight it a long time ago. Ooh, what's for dinner? I shake the thoughts from my head. It's no use thinking about that now. I have some inspiration to look for. Grab my phone, my wallet, my house keys from my desk. Give my room a once over, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Then, with a final flash of some finger guns to my reflection in the mirror, I'm out. Hi, Shears. How are you? I feel like I should text the ladies of the. LHSYA and goes, so there's a game for y'all. It isn't long until I find myself standing outside the house. 6969 Dead End Drive. Welp. What do you do with that? <laughs> Hi, Tuck. My shears. I'm I'm doing a thing. I'm texting this. I'm going to take a screenshot and text this to my friends and go, this game was made for you. Hold please. Hi Logan, welcome on in. Thanks for, thanks for following. I'm just, I'm, I really am taking a pic, a picture of the screen, and sending it to my friends right now. I really did send my friends a text with that screenshot. Heh. <laughs> nice. It's 
It's creepy and old and no one actually knows who owns it and right now it's luring me in. Normally, I pass by on my walk to the coffee shop during the day and give it no more than a fleeting thought. Maybe it's a desperation for a crumb of inspiration, but tonight I'm intrigued. It's creepy and old. Oh, nope. I went backwards somehow. Good job, me. Hey, Melba. Normally, I pass by on my walk to the coffee shop and during the day, give it no more than a fleeting thought. Maybe it's a desperation for a crumb of inspiration, but tonight I'm intrigued. For years, I thought it was totally abandoned. The windows all covered with what looks like scraps of newspaper. What gives me pause is the front yard. It's too well kept. Those bushes don't tend to themselves. Like every historic neighborhood, there's always that one house that has a particularly bad reputation. And this gothic beauty is it. I've heard all the stories. I count them on my fingers. Witches who eat children, an axe murderer who slaughtered their whole family, a pack of feral stray cats overthrowing the previous owner, a lycanthrope's hideout, my personal favorite, vampires. I always thought it was a joke to scare away kids to stop them from playing on their lawn, but uh, if only it were true. I find myself just standing here staring, tempted by the house and what might linger inside it, which isn't the smartest move. In October, in the Pacific Northwest. It's dark, I'm cold, it's also definitely about to rain. I should go in. That was weird. I'm taking off slow mode, I don't know why it was on. The words fall out of my mouth without thought. It's pure impulse, succumbing to the mystery tugging at my curiosity. I shrug to myself and look around. No one's here to witness my petty crime of breaking and entering. With my journalistic integrity intact, I will myself to stroll up to the house. The porch groans loudly in protest as I step on it, and my hand reaches out for the front door. <laughs> I apply gentle pressure and the door just swings open with a deliciously spooky, decidedly terrifying reek. That's not what I expected. Was it just left a jar like that? Damn. I was very prepared to use the lockpicking skills I picked up from all the video games I played. Which totally would have worked. Trust me, I've picked enough locks in Skyrim I should know. As the door swings open, a slight breeze flows from inside like someone forgot to close the fridge and let out the cold. I shiver against it. And then, finally, I hesitate. Should I really be adding Trespasser to my resume? Am I actually doing this? Yes, don't be a coward. On second thought, let's not. You know, we, we didn't come all the way to not go in this house. What would my therapist say? He told me it'd be a good idea for me to say yes to more things in my life. Let's save before we do anything else. Because I feel like this is a point where I should save. This is almost certainly what she was talking about. Listen, Cypher. You go in this house, you do it right now. Now we're talking to ourselves on the porch of a haunted mansion. This is going to go well. Hey, Adiana. And, uh, God damn Amazon, sorry, I missed you while I was reading earlier. Think of the possibilities. If there are no corporeal beings, hopefully there will be a hot ghost that won't make me want to shit my pants. I push the door open. A little more and squeeze inside. It's now or never. Once I get inside the house, my teeth start chattering. It's cold. Like really fucking cold. 
Someone forgot heating exists. I think I'm in a small foyer. It's hard to tell without the soft glow of the moon outside. I can barely see my hand in front of my face. I pull up my phone, turn on the flashlight, and inspect my surroundings. As I shine my light around the room, I see this place appears to be lost in time. Nothing seems to have changed since at least the 1800s. Not the furniture, the wallpaper, or the smell. Hey, Panda. I inhale deeply and catch the scent of something pungent and put putrescine hidden deep within the normal old house musk. Pleasant as it is, it's an aroma that intrigues the rest of my senses, beckoning me to find the rest of the secrets packed within these walls. At the end of the hall, I see light sneaking through the crack of a half-open door. Whoever's here, if anyone at all, must be in here. I hold my breath as I listen intently for clues. And sure enough, there are the signs of life I craved. I hear what sounds like muffled conversation, and then a very clear- Fuck you! Oh god, I wasn't expecting voices. I raise an eyebrow. Now this is something worth investigating. As I take another step, the floorboards creak loudly under my feet. Shit. I pause. Silent as a grave, as still as a statue. I pray those muffled voices didn't hear me. There's a tense moment before the voices continue, and I realize the breath I was holding. Released the breath I was holding. I pass a stealth check. Maybe. Continuing to sneak along the dark corridor, I creep closer and closer to the illuminated room. And I'm right outside the cracked door with my back against the wall. Now that I'm closer, I can hear them more clearly. Three. Three distinctly different, dulcet tones echo into the hallway. Do you smell that? Everything goes deathly silent. Then... It smells like human in here. I freeze instantly. There it is again! I keep telling you it's your dirty cops piled in the sink. You're just as shit at doing dishes as you are playing cards. At least, when he sucks at cards, there's a chance he'll have to take his clothes off. Every day the cubs keep piling up and not a nipple in sight. First of all, I'm good at everything. A warrior like me just can't waste his time on trivial things like cards and dishes. Gotta save my huge brain and muscles for more important things. Second... I hear the sound of someone inhaling deeply. My nose never lies. I smell human. The speaker's words hit me like a thunderbolt. What have I been thinking? I have somehow keep scrolling back and I'm not sure how. The speaker's words hit me like a thunderbolt. What had I been thinking skulking about in the hallway and eavesdropping on whoever lives here? It'd be a troop of axe murders for all I know. Have we already forgotten the time your nose led us straight into that werewolf house party? Somehow, despite the growing panic in my chest, the phrase werewolf house party makes me snort. I cover my mouth with my hand immediately as though it might somehow take it back. But it's too late. Panther. Well, 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 we might have company after all. Go on. Show yourself. I can't describe the feeling, but it's like I'm being compelled to step from the darkness and into the light. My feet propel me forward of their own accord. Hearing me around the corners, I resign myself to the fact that I've been caught. What I see when I enter the room jolts me right out of my numbness into a state of shock. Oh, hi. Uncontrollably, my heart skips a beat. A 
three voices that I heard are matched by three equally as mesmerizing faces. They're so beautiful it also hurts to look at it almost hurts to look at them. By the look of their slightly perturbed and yet also slightly intrigued expressions, I've clearly interrupted something. Using my big galaxy brain, I survey the situation to decide my next move. There's a mess of playing cards and glasses of red wine strewn across the table in front of them. The way they're holding their cards reminds me of an old spaghetti western, right before there's a shootout in the saloon. I don't think that's red wine. The three of them stare at me in a way that makes me feel like a ham ready for carving. None of them speak. Just evaluate me with this bizarre hunger in their gazes. I should say something to shatter this long, incredibly awkward pause. But yes, we know the vampires. We know it's not wine. I'm not saying howdy. I refuse to say howdy. Oh no, I appear to be lost. Though I appear to be lost, but it's barely out of my mouth before they leap towards me at inhuman speed, knocking me onto my back and pushing me down against the carpet. The breath leaves my lungs, my hands burn as bare skin and textile collide. See? I fucking told you I smelled human. Never doubt me again. At this point, why are you wearing a shirt? There's no point in wearing one. No tree for you just getting it right, Ilias. Assuming we all want to call Dib, should we rock, paper, scissors for him? Dibs, really, Laurel? Can't we just share? We haven't done that in a while. No, Valeria. Y'all, is the chat going to be okay? Just checking. Is chat all right? Okay, then. Just checking. As the oldest, smartest, and hottest, the human is mine by right. I feel like a piece of furniture out for auction at a swap meet. Am I into that? I'm completely mesmerized by every hand movement, every turn of their lips, every glance in my direction as they bicker. My heart races and I can feel myself getting unnaturally hot. Despite the freezing temperature of the house. Don't be greedy, Illy. Think of all the fun we could have. That's all it is for you. Fun. You do enjoy those prepackaged little blood bags, but a hunter like me needs to feed. My fangs haven't pierced flesh in so long. Also, side note, I like the fact that the black vampire is still black. They're not chalky white. The biggest one has me pinned to the floor. Despite the threatening words, they don't exactly seem intent on killing me right this second. Even lying prone on the ground, the first thing I notice is their teeth, or rather the deadly points of their canines. The skin doesn't have the same plumpness or glow that mine has, almost like their capillaries forgot how to refill with blood. And the mirror behind them has no reflection. No. This cannot be happening. Can it? There's no way they're actually... Vampires? The word crashes out and they turn to me hungry. Unforgiving, Beryl. 
One that called Valeria grabs hold of my chin with a delicate hand. There's nothing delicate about the way she holds me. Looks like we have a fan on our hands. Oh dear. Mmm, it looks like we do. Her dark brows are pinched when she leans closer. How tilted like she's sizing me up. Sorry, I too require libation, mostly because I'm reading. Hey, Catherine. You interrupted us, kitten. And Ilios here was just about to take his shirt off. Taking your shirt off is for losers. And I was clearly winning. Hmm. I like how y'all like shirts. I don't have to dream about winning. Winning is all I do. Look at these muscles. My face, these cards. Wow. Phil continues to bicker amongst themselves, and I just lie here watching. Vampires are just myths, monsters made up by confused historians, but embellished by storytellers seeking to make us feel something. There has to be a simple explanation for these three, but now is not the time to get myself worked up in my own little fantasies. Probably just some sort of kinky vampire LARP event. Cosplayers who lift or something. And I'm usually so on top of these gatherings. The costuming and props are serious. Movie magic fangs, even the red wine in their glasses looks like real blood. And it wouldn't surprise me if they rented out this house for their own pleasure. There's no way you're real vampires. Who are you? A deadly silence fills the space between us as I gracelessly interrupt their quarreling. Larry's hand gets tighter on my chin. Ilya's body feels heavier against me. Who are we? You don't think we're real? I don't give a shit what he thinks. He'll know we're real enough when his blood is sliding down our throats. Much talking, not enough killing. Ilya lunges for me at a speed that my eyes can hardly register. I'm in such a broken state of shock that I say the first thing that comes into my head. Parley! They all pause immediately, going still to statues as they look at me with a distinct mix of disgust and confusion. Parley? Do we look like fucking pirates to you? <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. That made me laugh. You are what you eat, I suppose. Yo ho ho. I'm sorry. I, uh... Is there like a vampire version of parlay where you have to let me explain myself before you kill me? That green shit they put on your food to make it look nice? That's parsley. Parlay, not parsley. It's some bullshit the human picked up from the movies. You know, parlay. Clearly, Ilyas does not know. Besides, it's bold of you to assume we have anything to talk to you about, human. He could surprise you, Val. You know, I never thought I'd be reminiscing about all the sailors I've eaten, when I first sensed him quiver around the corner. Honestly, Laurel, who hasn't eaten a ship full of sailors? Oh, now you've got me thinking about that time in Central Bay. It does. 
uh, he, him, they, them, or she, her. And I clicked on he, him by mistake and couldn't go back, so. I goofed. She gives my head an eye a little shake. Her fingers digging into my cheeks. Making my mouth purse, she stares wistfully into the distance. Oh, pristine beaches, expensive wines, obnoxious tourists, no one will miss. Yes. As I once again continue to talk as if I'm not there, my gaze flits between their gorgeous, terrifying faces, desperate to find something I can use. All those years of memorizing books and movies and useless video games and cryptolores prepared me for this moment. I rack my brain for what little information I've managed to learn about these three thus far. The biggest one, Ilyas, is apparently the oldest and seems to believe he's the best of the three of them in every way. He's probably susceptible to flattery. Valeria, the most petite of the trio, seems to have a penchant for luxury. The glazed look in her eyes when she mentions San Tropez is anything to go by. And finally, Laurel, the hardest read of the three, gives me the distinct impression they might be open to being entertained. I won't have much time to try whatever it is I'm going to do, so I'd better choose a vampire fast. And just go for it. Ooh, I'm going to offer to keep Laurel entertained. Laurel, you seem like the type to appreciate a little entertainment. You know, dinner and a show. A light sparks in the dark eyes. To hope it's a sign of genuine interest, however mild or controlled. And you've got all that from five minutes of eavesdropping. Surely not. You must be a truly gifted psychic. A joke, clearly. There's a soft lilt to their casual tone when I expect to hear sarcasm. Should I be worried? <laughs> Come on, Laurel. A human psychic. Oh, incredible. The things that fly over your head, Illy. I'm being serious, Val. A clairvoyant has arrived to teach us about ourselves. Uh-oh. Aren't you at least a little curious? Not one bit. You see that human? My companions don't believe you. My chest flutters keenly aware of the predicament I've launched myself into. I think you ought to prove yourself. Tell me what I'm thinking right now. Oh dear. Katrina. Boring. That's not entertainment. That's... Not every moment can be a rave, Illy. Where were we? Ah, oh, yes. You were going to read my mind. I'm thinking about... Oh dear. Oh, this is tough. I'm gonna go drinking my blood. I have no clue what I should do here. Drinking my blood? Hmm. <sighs> you couldn't be more unoriginal if you tried. Duh. But I wasn't wrong. Laurel eyes me with a chilly air about him. Somehow, once again, these three beautiful people are arguing amongst themselves, and I'm left with the mo moment to ponder my options. There's no going back for me, but maybe I can Shahrazad my way through this extremely sexy, scary predicament. It's clear to me we'll never settle on who gets to eat me if we continue on like this. You're all just too sexy and cool and clever. And I suppose you have our answer, do you? Again, wasting time talking when we could be feeding. Now, now, Illy. 
often do we get entertainment of this caliber delivered to our doorstep? I want to see what cute little scheme he's got in his pocket. The massive vampire actually pouts. It actually hurts to be this bored, you know. I suppose we can hear a suggestion before we tear him apart. Talk fast, human. I can only keep these two from your throat for so long. Okay, well, I was thinking maybe I could ask you three a couple of questions. Everyone gets to know each of you a little better. That way we can see who's the best fit to eat me. You're holding Ely and I back for a fucking job interview. I haven't had a job in... He frowns, his eyes squinting, mouth opening and closing. He seems to be thinking particularly hard about something. He raises hand and looks to be counting on his fingers, but he gives up after a few moments. <laughs> Long fucking time, and I'll be damned if I start now. Laurel inhales and exhales quietly, hint of a smile on his perfect purple lips. Hi, hey, Galen. Hey, Bomb. <sighs> Absolute treasures, aren't they? Keep talking. They really are the creatures of the night they claim to be. I better continue to think fast. I've survived thus far on wit alone, and I can't let it fail me now. Maybe confidence is key here. Maybe I can throw them off. I'm still not convinced you're real. I stand my ground. Surely I can easily play their game and win them over with compliments. And again, if you're just joining, this game does have some content warnings. It does have um, Ink and BDSM. It is not graphic, but it is an 18 plus game, just so you are aware. Before I get further into this plotline and potential uh, shenaniganry occurs. There's just no way you're not LARPers. Silly, sexy LARPers. I smirk at them. Try my best to make sure it doesn't shake nervously at the edges. Either way, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> Laurel exhales a lilting laugh. Que sera. Certainly an interesting credo to live by. And... Die by. You really are quite bold for a blood bag, aren't you? Wow, I'm a blood bag. Wow. I admire your tenacity, I suppose. We'll indulge you, but this is truly your last chance. Ilias, clearly on a different page than Laurel and Valeria entirely, flexes his big, beefy arm. I just can't believe you think that humans could ever have muscles like mine. Valeria narrows her eyes at me as Ilya palms his fist. It's pretty keen on ripping me to shreds. I don't know. It sounds like he's been a vampire a bit too long. Ilya, not yet. A moment of raw tension passes. This better be as fun as you seem to think it will be, Laurel. I can think of a million better ways to spend my time. Wow. That wasn't something I expected. Wow. Wow. I don't know how to take screenshots. Wait, I do. Ha ha. Laurel pointedly ignores her. Tell me, what exactly drove you to fling yourself into this pit of vipers, human? Elias scrambles. It is full release. It just came out today on itch.io. God, it's so boring when you play Puppet Master.
I'm over it. Enough talking. I'm taking what's mine. Oh, someone's hungry and grumpy. A look passes over Valeria's face. She's suddenly reconsidering things. You certainly don't want to hunt him now, Illy. <sighs> oh, actually, uh, if I've got a mod who has uh, edit access, can you add PR copy to the title? Come on. He's just standing here like we owe him something. A hunt can take many forms, Elias. Elias throws them both a look of open disgust, but his size sounds a lot like defeat, however temporary that may be. Ugh. I'll make it fun for you, Illy. If I don't, I'll finally bring their pretty little clerk home for dinner. I'll even let you have the first bite. Beefy vampire remains unconvinced. You don't make it easy, do you? Let's bring out the big gun, shall we? And here I was, saving this treat for a special occasion. Ilias perks up a bit at that. Humor me, and I'll hand over that extra special, super rare wiggle ad spread from the 1992 Party Down edition of Glowrods Weekly. Wow, whatever that is, he's very excited about this. The one with the, uh... Yes. And the... I don't know, honestly. Yes. Oh, dear. I even had it laminated to guard against your... nightly excretions. We're, we're getting there yet. We're getting there somewhere. Fine, human. Check this shit out. Hmm. Like a shirt flex is showing me his delts, biceps, triceps, and a multitude of muscles I can't even name. You read enough dirty magazines to know that humans are definitely capable of achieving such a body, Illy. I'll also take the liberty to remind you that you had those muscles when you were alive. Yeah, well, uh... Can a human do this? I am afraid to see what's coming next. Uh, yes, Ilias. Get on my back, Laurel! You too, Val! Fuck. You cannot be fucking serious. Ugh. dear. It's an interesting sort of vampire pyramid. Now what? Watch. Well, if my character had sense, they would run. Then we wouldn't have a game. <laughs> what is going on? What is happening to me? This is very much me if I were in this situation right now. One second I'm practically begging for my life, and the next they're trying to impress me with their talents. I don't know what to think as my mind boomerangs from terrified to fascinated to enthralled. This certainly isn't what I had in mind all the times I've dreamed about watching three hot vampires ride each other. I'd be lying if I said this was exactly what I expected. I'm sorry to tell you that everything you've learned from your insipid modern media is likely wrong. <laughs> Laughable at best. Everything? Laurel and Valeria dismount and Elias huffs as he stands to join them. Yes, everything. I have so many questions. 
Uh, let me ask about crosses since one of them seems to be wearing a cross. Surely crosses still harm you. Besides being in bad taste. I quite like mine, fuck you very much. Welp. See, Valeria can wear one of gold and they clearly don't do us much harm. Valeria drags a fingertip over her stern and a sly smile on her face. I can't help but let my eyes wander down to where her necklace is nestled between her. Wow. Okay, but what about coffins? Do I look like I sleep in a coffin to you? Who do you think I am? Fucking Nosferatu? Now hold on a minute. Are you saying Nosferatu is real? Hmm. In a way, I suppose. I'm concerned about the fact that the term coffin hair just came up. Dracula is very real and Nosferatu was based on him, so... You know, I actually knew Dracula personally. <laughs> Ilya screams loudly. Valeria continues, raising her voice slightly as if to drown out his obvious sorrow. Vampires might not age, but the way that Laurel and Ilya seem to wither, with the prospect of listening to her tell another story, seems to sap a few centuries off their infinite lifespan. Oh, it was all very yeah, exciting at first, first, the whole King of Darkness thing. But then you come to realize that he's far too invested in the wrong kind of impaling. Hey now. Ah, oh, such a waste. Wait, you had sex with Dracula? Oh, well of course I fucked him. I'm not stupid. Oh, he's six foot seven and built like a god. I'm kind of glad y'all can't see my face right now. I had to get a screenshot. I finally remembered S's for screenshot, not print screen. I'm just saying, it's unfortunate Bullshit. that he showed more interest in skewering his enemies than me. And I'm not going to beg any man, Dracula or not, to pay me that attention. Means... My mind is officially blown. Okay, now to ask, what exactly is the difference between vampire sex and human sex? Oh, you poor creature. You have no, no idea. idea. It's better than your inadequate human mind could ever possibly imagine. So again, CW, this is an 18 plus game. While gra sex is not graphic, kink and BDSM does come up. We can physically see lust spiraling off of bodies like smoky tendrils can taste the pheromones that linger on the tip of gasping tongues. Thank you for the prime sub reach. We can smell every bead of sweat and come a plethora of aromas. Again, if, if pink and sex is not your thing, this may not be the game for you to watch. No hard feelings. I will not be offended. Just so you know what's coming up. Take that as you will. Sweet, salty, and inviting. It rules! Oh my god, Ilias is such a fucking frat boy. Uh, can someone allow that? I mean, I, there's no smell of vision, thankfully. Also, it depends on what you eat or don't eat and drink. If you don't drink enough water, you could have problems. My heart starts racing and then... <laughs> Hang on. Buck, are we still talking to our dinner? Dinner? 
Yes, that would be you. Sends a good garnish. I am known to be pretty tasty. Ugh. My urge to kill it is dissipating. This human has no sense of self-preservation. Ugh. No fun if you're not scared. Hmm. It really has been too long since I've had a good, hot, fresh meal. As I stare into three sets of wide scarlet eyes, I feel like I'm standing on the precipice of something. Something terrifying and life ruining. My heart is racing just like I've won the fucking lottery. I think back to my dream. Was it a premonition? Was the universe predicting my untimely death at the hands of these three monsters? You know what would make this mortal's blood taste better? Performance. I want to play with him. Make it last. I step forward again, just on the edge of too close. And their hungry gaze roams my body like they're sizing me up for feasting. The eagerness inside me awakens, staring curiously, and it takes every ounce of my remaining willpower not to tip my throat and surrender. Fuck this. I want to kill him right now. And I call dibs. Well, shit. In an instant, Ilias is racing towards me. His outstretched arms grab my shoulders and we topple over. I hit the floor for a second time this evening. I feel a very real sense of deja vu wash over me. He licks his lips before bearing his cruel fangs. Elias, wait. Valeria bends over and leans close, her long silky hair falling in my face. She traces the curve of my cheek with her fingertip, trailing down over my jaw. Tell me your name. Cypher Amel. Well now, Laurel here seems to have taken a liking to you. So that means you have one final, a uh, final chance to plead your case. Good luck. And don't fuck it up. Well then. Alright. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. Record scratch. Ah. This isn't exactly what I had in mind when I left my house earlier this evening. On the lookout for an adventure. It might be a situation that's played out in more than a few of my wicked fantasies. I have a terrible feeling I won't be getting the usual happy ending I imagine. No, this definitely doesn't feel like a running off in the sunset with three super ripped, super hot vampires with a gentle breeze blowing through my hair kind of deal. Maybe they'll prop me up on the sofa when they're done draining me dry and dress my corpse with a fashionable pair of sunglasses. If I'm lucky. They certainly seem like the type. Focus, Cypher. Elias, he sells me pinned to the floor, staring at me. A friend pinching his brow, and I wonder if maybe he can hear some of the weird shit currently swirling around in my brain. Valeria, still hovering close enough, I can smell her sweet perfume. Grows more menacing by the second. Laurel, quiet, contemplative, terrifying Laurel. Is wearing a smirk that could kill you from a hundred yards away. They're leaning against the wall, watching the whole thing go down from a safe distance. Could be worse. Maybe. If they want me to tell them why they shouldn't just kill me here and now, I'd better put my back into it. As a writer, I'm notoriously good at bullshitting. 
or as ghosting user monsterfucker69420 commented, sending a fan to those people desperate for more. I need to figure out how to convince them not to rip open my throat and suck my life away. If I fail, honestly it wouldn't be that bad either. I go out in service of something I love. And then I have a light bulb moment. A fucking terrible, ill-advised, monumentally stupid light bulb moment. Wait. Elias and Valeria pull back as quickly as if struck, her heads tipping to the side in the same way a dog would if you shook a treat box. <laughs> Laurel just huffs to laugh, but doesn't like they plan on stopping me from further pleading my case. Okay, I'm I'm playing the game, so I did not catch that, and the game could it could also be a bug. So I can ask uh, the devs about it. I have to wonder if these three ever manage to have a fresh meal. I want to be like you. I have a proposition for you. Say I do end up with all the bargaining chips. What exactly do I want? I'm a paranormal writer. Am I just content to leave only with the memory of this insane night? language. Trying to do it justice in my writing. Dag nabbit, you all have me doing it too. Or do I want something more? Souvenir? Trinket? Maybe. It's called First Bite T-Birdie. It is a visual novel. I'm trying to uh, romance a vampire. Or... We're waiting. Thing. Fuck it. These are vampires. Early immortality must be on the table here. Take a deep breath. What would I have to do to convince you to make me like you? Turn me into a vampire. <laughs> Elias bursts into laughter immediately, which is really great for my ego, if not expected, actually. But when I tear my eyes from his doubled over hulking form and I look at Valeria and Laurel, I seem to be intrigued. <laughs> That's, hilarious. That's hilarious. A really good one. I forgot humans could be so funny. Hey, by panic. Talk. I mean, I'd be stupid not to ask, right? I've literally dreamed of having an opportunity like this my whole life. Can you blame me for taking the risk? You're gonna kill me regardless, I think. Blair shrugs and look at Laurel and looks at Laurel. The human isn't wrong. Elias snaps his head from side to side quickly, looking between his two comrades like they just grew horns. Wait, are you actually pausing right now? Why aren't we chowing down? Ugh. So if you really want this, convince us. Oh dear. My mouth falls open, then closes. Open. Close. Right. I can do that. Shit, fuck, what have I done? Bill Ilya's grip on my shoulders loosen as he swings his leg over to stop straddling me. Reluctantly, he sets me free and I instinctively sit up, getting my knees into my chest. We're expecting some good entertainment this evening now, you know? Though I'll warn you in case you haven't already guessed, we're a uh, pretty tough crowd. A gulp, but I can work with that. This is just a game, right? A very stupid, very deadly game. But I've been gifted a few more turns to make this work in my favor. And hey, I've played tons of games. I have to use all my charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent to turn the tables. Judging by the looks on their faces, the longer I dilly dally, the hungrier, the more impatient they get. Like I already said, and like they already confirmed, he asked me walking out alive or virtually non-existent. That's more than fair. I pause, letting the words hang in the air. I couldn't tell you, I've never seen Drag Race and I refuse to watch it. 
because, well, reasons. Knowing I now have the full attention of the vampires, I use my next turn to stand up and brush myself off, making sure my stance is confident as I can muster. You don't need to know I'm metaphorically shitting myself, despite them. I'll be being able to hear my heart screaming in my chest. It's not every day we come across a human who lacks fear when staring death in the face. So enlighten us. Well, firstly, you're all really fucking hot. Larry rolls her eyes so hard I think they might fall out of her skull. Okay. Dating the obvious, kid. Uh, what I mean is vampires are brilliant, fascinating creatures, and until tonight I thought weren't fact but fiction. I've studied you, written about you. Why would I be afraid to die when it's literally my Freudian death wish dream of fulfillment come to life? Not as pretty as you seem to think. There's a lot of blood. Like, a ton. A whole body's worth. Oh, it's especially messy when Illy is involved. <laughs> okay, Illy. Once Valeria and the look she gives him makes me think she might bite his finger off. Plus, you're not even half as delicate as you think you are. You get sloppy, too. She turns her nose up at him. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No, oh, methinks... Methinks uh, Valeria is not uh, a dainty eater, shall we say. Illy is right. Remember that couple in Trinidad? Oh. Ugh. She clearly does. I remember walking in on the three of you. It was a complete bloodbath. I'll never forget your face. Don't make me make you forget my face. Oh dear. As I listen to them talk about their past indiscretions, you have joining them on raucous blood fuel vacation sounds deliciously tempting. I muster up as much willpower as I can to keep my voice steady. I'm serious about what I said. I want you to turn me. I feel three sets of eyes narrowing in on all of my vital spots. Laurel looks me over like a hamster in a cage. Illy, Val, you are always commenting on your woefully ceaseless boredom. Maybe Cypher can liven things up around here. They smile at me despite it reaching their pretty eyes. Still doesn't quite stick. I am exceptionally good at making life interesting, if I do say so myself. I can teach you things like gaming, internet shopping, how not to act on Twitter. That's becoming my new better. We might be old. But we're not stuck in the Victorian times. Oh! Maybe you can fix my computer? <laughs> it's doing that thing that it always does. We can talk about your spectacular ability to infect every device we own with porn malware some other time, Elias. Wow. So, funny, not funny story. When I still worked at a university, one of our student workers disabled the virus software, antivirus software, so you could watch a soccer match and got viruses so bad, they wouldn't even try to fix the computer. They just replaced it. Yeah, and I got called while I was on vacation to deal with it. I was not happy. What? Ugh. Hey, DC. Whatever hand I feel my words die on my tongue. You think it's something we can easily do? 
just turn you, like how humans adopt a puppy. Hmm. Well, it's not that hard. Really, that's not the point. None of us chose this life. It's not all amazing sex and free meals. God damn. Uh. What Valeria means is that it isn't as glamorous as I assume you believe it to be. Valeria stuff toward me, closing the distance between us. She takes my chin between her forefinger and thumb, making sure I have no choice but to look at her. Why should we even bother letting you continue to waste our precious time, Cypher? Oh, entertaining you and your little idea was fun for a second, but... I get bored so very easily, and Illy's tummy is going to start growling soon. She leans closer again, her lips brushing my ear. <laughs> you won't like him when he's hungry. Hey, I'm always hungry. I'm going to go with I want to be strong, and maybe that'll appeal to Ilyas. I'm tired of this human body, can only do so much. If that ain't a fucking mood. Especially now that I know being, mo being more is such a tangible thing. I want to be stronger. Better. Faster. This quirks a bra on what looks like curiosity, but then he's scoffing and looking smug. That's cute, but you'll never be better than me. <laughs> he probably flexes his big meaty arm, and wow, that's, um, big. Huge. Extra large. Our kind are strong, sure. But don't go thinking you could ever reach my level of perfection. Understand? Duly noted. Then I hear. Is that a meow? Wait, you have a cat? Nasty Dennis. He's not just a cat. Nasty Dennis. I look around for this nasty Dennis and see nothing. Why is someone intimidating meowing continues? Can I see him? Ugh. It isn't quite that simple, I'm afraid. He's more fiend than feline. If you do see him, it's probably a bad omen for you, human. Oh boy. Is he like one of those cats who sit with elderly people in nursing homes before they die? <sighs> Ow. Nah, I'll probably just shred your jugular. Ah, so that's where the nasty comes from. Got it. Someone is enamored, I don't blame you. He's a fine specimen. Right. I wouldn't say that I'm enamored, just curious. Isn't curiosity what killed the cat? Good thing I'm not a cat. Nasty Dennis is a shaggy white person with a permanent rusting murder face. He's wearing a dashing, tiny red bow tie. He's adorable. It's a cute ass cat. I love him. He looks so soft. I want to kiss his fluffy, angry eyebrows. You really do have a death wish. Clearly. Just because you've lasted this long, doesn't mean we won't kill you, you know? Trying to distract us by using Nasty Dennis as a pawn. I'm on to you, human. Come on. Right, that whole thing. Yet I'm not sure how much longer I can hold him off like this. We're taking a risky game of breaking and entering. 
trespassing and most heinously, I interrupted their game night. And now I'm stuck in a game of my own making, one of life and death. I can't just stand by and hope the start to want to keep me around without putting the work in, especially with such an incredible opportunity being dangled right before my eyes. Like all good relationships, it's not all about me. I need to know more about them. I need to know what the fuck I'm getting myself into. All his pants out the way I want it to. You've interrogated me, now maybe you should let me ask you some questions. A question for questions seems fair. Laurel winks at me and extends their fingers, my eyes drifting their sharp, shiny talons. But be careful. Any wrong answers in your innards will make a nice table dressing. Valeria seems to perk up at the prospect of getting to talk about herself. Okay. There are a lot of things I can think of to ask them off the top of my head. Like, do bats make good company, for example? But then maybe I should use my chances wisely and ask something productive. What do you miss most about being human? <laughs> Nothing. I'm perfect. Wow, Elias. Wow. Dot, dot, dot. I stared him for a beat, and he seems pretty serious. I expected something a little bit more profound, not gonna lie. Laurel smiled softly, almost wistfully. Hmm. Music festivals. What about you, Valeria? Her mouth forms a little O, her eyes wide, and she looks almost taken aback for a moment. Before she regains her steely composure and glares daggers at me. I lived in a castle once, a big fancy one with pretty women who would dress me every morning and brush my hair. She scrunches up her nose and looks around the living room. Ugh. Clearly I've downgraded. Hey, this is a nice house. Is it a castle? With pretty women who dress me and brush my hair every morning? Well, you got me there. It could be. But no. No, it is not. Then there's my answer. I want a fucking castle. And to be surrounded by beautiful women. See, now I wonder how this would go if, if I had picked she, her pronouns. I, I am, I am curious to go back and change, do a new playthrough with different pronouns. Noted. Now it's our turn. Laurel's eyes are sharp and full of mischief. Who do you stand in LBS? Sorry, what? Who? Uh, can someone uh, allow that through, please? Uh, I'm going to ask what's an LBS because I have no idea. No idea what this is supposed to be. Who did the what? This is me. Why is this actually me? Laurel sighs and touches me loudly. I instantly feel far more mortified than I don't know. Surely I'm more up to speed with pop culture references than these three. Not for me, no answer either. I'm going to go forever without knowing who or what an LBS. OBS is, aren't I? Is that... That is factory, Laurel? They nod, but I'm not entirely really sure if I've made a good impression or not. Before I can ask my next question, at least practically bulldozes Laurel out of the way. 
<laughs> okay, Cypher. One, how does a three-day hunt in the woods sound to you? Two, how do you like your blood to taste? No idea. Three, where is your favorite place to bite someone? Four, what are your opinions on swords? A lot of questions. A lot of questions. Kidding, I love swords. I keep a katana by my bed while I sleep, like all good nerds. Um You do? Oh, we also have three Shania and a book and in my apartment. Why is this game spying on me? Why? I do have a Boken, I do have a katana, I do not have a Shana I have a Shanai. Why is this game spying on me, though? Why? Why is the game spying on me? Not to brag. But I did take several sword fighting classes in college. His big golden eyes seem to sparkle in wonder. I've got more swords. I don't know if Panda's still here. But Panda has seen the amount of blades in this apartment. Hell yeah! I have one side. I don't have a pair of them. Now, Are you quite finished hogging the human, I'm Illy? Illy? Illy just pats him, Valeria pats him on the chest. And she's staring me down, a deadly look in her eyes. My turn. Tell me, if given the chance, how would you try to impress a fine specimen of a vampire like myself? Oh dear. She pokes one of her fangs with her tongue. It feels like a threat. Sexy one. Think fast. Oh dear. I want to take you anywhere, everywhere, we'll travel the world. Jess. I sign up with the prospect, she doesn't even try to hide her apparent eagerness. I hold myself back from launching into a poorly time rendition of a whole new world. But only just. Oh, I haven't traveled in so long. We used to go wherever we pleased, do whatever we wanted, eat whoever we could sink our teeth into. Oh. She thighs wistfully. I miss killing people in different countries. Americans have come to taste so bland. My palate isn't as refined as it used to be. Wow. I can fix that. I know where all the tasty humans hang out. What the fuck? Okay. Larry smirks, and I feel my heart do a little lurch in my chest. Out of fear? Arousal? Either's possible. All these questions, all this incessant prodding. I, I don't understand the hashtag. This is neither the weirdest job interview I've had or the best speed dating session I've ever been to. I can't tell if I like it or love it. Before they find me for more information, there's something I'm desperate to ask about. Powers, abilities. I know I have them and I want to know it all. I'm potentially going to be a vampire by the end of the night. I should be well informed about what my new body will be capable of. I wonder about all the cool vampire shit you can do. Interesting priorities. Though, it's a fair question. I suppose the ability to see threads of truth you mortals can't. The added benefit of near-miraculous strength has its perks, but being a walking polygraph makes living in the shadows of humanity that much more entertaining. Hmm. It's hard to choose one thing. Oh my 
god. He runs his hand through his hair like a male model in a perfume ad as he contemplates his response. I'm basically good at everything. But if I've got to pick just one... Sharpen senses. I can hear a mouse's heartbeat at the other end of the house. I could smell you before you even set foot in here. Well, being young and beautiful forever certainly has its perks, but if I simply had to choose one thing, I'd say that I quite enjoy thralling people. Oh, there's something inherently satisfying about bending people's will before ripping their throat out. You know, there's a, an art to it. Well, those were all mildly terrifying. That all sounds incredibly cool and fun. Three of them look very pleased with themselves. It's getting late or early and I feel the anxiety pangs in my chest. They stare at me with thinly veiled impatience or judgment. Can't quite tell. My quick firing brain tell me they're talking about me telepathically or something. The silence is deadly. I pleaded my case for long enough and I really can't stand to wait around anymore. It's time. Though so did I pass the test? Laurel taps her long fingernails against their chin in contemplation. I have one last question for you, Cypher. Call me curious, but if you had to choose one of us to be your sire, who would you pick? Oh. Clearly, there's only one correct choice. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, if I don't choose, will I die regardless? Even if it is a scheme to get their fangs in my throat, I have no choice but to answer. Gotta go with Laurel. Hey, Zero. It has to be Laurel. They've enchanted me with their mysterious ways and their almost mischievous demeanor. I think we can have a lot of fun together. Laurel, I choose you. Pika Pika, I guess. He chuckles under his breath as he smirks in my direction. Well, is that your final for answer? Or Laurel. Yes. Well, it is. is that your final answer? Apparently hitting the mouse button means you chain, you scroll back. Yes, it is. My cheeks flush and I avert my gaze from Laurel. He stares at me quite intently, apparently satisfied they're the chosen one. So... They all look at each other and shrug their shoulders. But they don't quite know what the fuck to do with me. I can't tell if I'm impressed or exasperated them. Oh, while I found myself marginally less bored than usual, I'm still on the fence. No, Valeria, you're on the floor. Oh my god, Ilias, please. I was only mildly entertained. Oh dear. Oh dear. Laurel yawns. I'm going to go on a limb and say it isn't exactly promising for me. I know what you can do to make it up to us. Elias grins wide. Do whatever you want, just name it. Oh boy. Leave. What? I'm sorry, what? Just like that. What? I'm confused. Aww. This can't, you can't, this can't be right. Oh. 
Oh, oh boy. Who said anything about living? Oh dear. Silly little bird. I love a good chase. Oh shit. Oh shit. Well, <laughs> dear, I struggle against Valeria's grip, kicking and flailing, but nothing I could possibly do would weaken her unforgiving grip. We do love it when you struggle. My heart rate quickens before I feel it. Biting. Three sets of fangs sinking into my skin. Tearing through skin and fat and muscle. And here I thought I could make it out alive. Foolish mortal. There's nothing left to do but close my eyes and let the darkness take hold. Wow, I died. That was silly of you. All right, then. Uh, all right. Hey, Megaran. All right, so I, I died. I did not make the right choices. I did not make the right choices at all. I tell you what, I'm going to give you a raid video while I get a quick bio. Um, hello, hello. Well, I'm going to give you a raid video. Enjoy, and I will BRB. Well, you may get the it's game Tanya. audio over that. Hello, everyone. Not sure. I'm Tanya. I'll be uh, right back. Oh, God. I play Invicta. I had to think about it for a hot second. <laughs> the uh, high and old Blade Keeper and both Invicta's pronouns and mine are she, her. All right. Um, I actually pull my blade on her and hold it up, and I'm like, I saved your life. Much like uh, by the beach, just like this, just like when you move on the beach, and then out the distance, all you hear is someone here at the top. <laughs> and he just runs oh up. God, I cannot. And he just put both hands on. Do people know what abyssal chickens look like? Yeah, they're nightmares. Yeah. Oh, I'm not hiding. I just think he smells really good. You complain about how he smelled like cheese. Oh yeah, I'm not super consistent. And she's just gonna turn and start walking farther down the hall. And I'm keep about not like consistent. Keep about five meters between her and Invicta. I like this woman. She has fire. Hello, uh, no, no, double no, raid. No. Hello, hello. Oh, God, no, I'm You're fire. in time for the raid video. Oh, God, and then we'll go back to oh, the vampire God. game and, yeah. and do a new playthrough. Hello. Goodness, okay, were you I playing all this time, Steven? I don't want to die. Ah! Fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I'm just like oh. kind of distracted by the way the weather looks. We're going to try this again with different choices and oh, uh, we'll shoot oh, her pronouns shit, as shit, soon shit, as this. Shit. Raid video is oh, done, shit. so hi everybody oh, from Megaran and um, oh, Eden's Raid. Yeah. Oh, she's re no, thank you, goodbye. Nope. There is Valor and running the fuck away. I sure am. I entirely the fuck am, goodbye. Oh no, you had fun no, playing the no, game, whatever will you do. Well, that weirds me out. Ah! Oh, 
You son of an Antivan whore! Who did that? <laughs> uh, welcome, Raiders. We are playing for spite. Um, I died. I did not convince the vampires to turn me or to bang me. So we're trying again. We're trying again. All right. Warning. And I'm going to uh, take a quick screenshot so I have it. I tried. I really tried, Jess. I tried. First fight is rated 18 plus for strong language, violence, potential player death, which we just experienced. Blood and gore, optional. Sexual scenes, including consensual, kink and BDSM. Supernatural emotional manipulation. And other content that some players may find disturbing. Some scenes may contain mild flashing images. Player discretion is advised. I'm going to warn you now. The very beginning does have a lot of flashing. So if that will bother you or could potentially trigger epilepsy, you may want to look away. I'm going to let the intro play through because I skipped it the first time because it kind of startled me. Um, so I'm going to look away and go get a drink and then we will start playing. But welcome Raiders. Hello. I'm also getting a drink. Suha! Suha wrote it! I love Suha. Featuring the voice talents. Marie Westbrook is Valeria. Alejandro Saab is. Yes. Jalen Cassell, who I know none of these voice actors. Trust me, we were trying for both. All right, so chat that was here earlier. Do you think a good femme name could be? I'm thinking Colleen Hawk, if that will fit. Uh, for those of you that were here earlier, I will keep narrating this. I'm going to let my hair down. Oh, God. Ow. Nothing but darkness surrounds me. I close my eyes, desperately trying to blink it away. There's just nothingness. Void. I'm alone. Where am I? What am I doing here? How did I even get here? I try moving my legs. Nothing. As hard as I try to run away, my body refuses to cooperate. I try my arms next. Frozen. Before I can try anything else, a light appears in the distance. There's something else flickering right next to that light. I can barely make it out, but what little I can see is horrifying. Glowing red eyes. Bright white fangs. Blood dripping from sharp talons. In an instant, they multiply, dancing around in the shadows. They laugh, a cacophony of demonic giggles, and skitter toward me in an inhuman speed, their movements chaotic. I'm helpless as they close in around me. An aroma of metallic sweetness infiltrates my nostrils, and I'm surrounded. Trapped. Then they pounce, claws tearing deep into my muscles as they grab hold of me. Teeth sinking into my flesh. I try to scream, but no sound escapes. 
Part one, hunger. Ah! My eyes shall open as I wake up in a cold sweat. It was a dream, just a dream. Or closer to a nightmare, depends on how you feel about being torn apart by vampires, I guess. My heart feels like it's about to burst out of my chest as my mind races over the lingering memory of what I saw. I quickly scan my surroundings to make sure I'm actually in my room. And also, alive. Everything is in its rightful place. My laptop is asking me if I'd like to continue watching Death of the Dead. At this point, I should know better than to fall asleep watching horror movies. I was lured in at the prospect of two hot characters kissing. I was resting my eyes for a little too long. Oops. Some ridiculous part of my brain holds a kernel of hope that one day I'll enter a deliciously dark world of the unknown and unexplainable. But for now, I'm stuck here. Even my dreams will let me near what I want. And now, now that these thoughts are once again racing through my mind, I know it's absolutely fruitless to try to fall back asleep. But I try nonetheless. I go through every trick in the book. Breathing exercises, counting sheep, writing erotic fanfiction in my head, decidedly unhelpful. Surprise, surprise, I'm still awake and blankly staring at my ceiling. Great job, me. I sigh, pushing the covers off my body. There's no point in staying in bed. Oh my god, I just noticed them. I grab my phone from my bedside table. Bracing myself as I check the time. 3 a.m. Once again, my body's betrayed me by falling into this disgusting, habitual cycle. I have a nightmare. Wake up. Stay awake. Rinse. Repeat. Defeated, I yawn and stretch my bones as I stand. I make my way to my bedroom mirror. Drag my fingers down my cheeks and glare at my reflection, illuminated by the dangling fairy lights. What's your first name? I think I want to go with Colleen Hawk if the game will let me. I don't know what the character limits are. And this time I'm going to pick the right pronouns because I goofed last time. A cipher could be either way. Um, we're going with Hawk this time. Pronouns. Um, right ones, because I missed clicked. Eye color. Oh, let's go with gray. Hey, wireless. Oh, goodness. Hello. Welcome, Raiders. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Graham. We are playing uh, First Bite, a vampire visual novel. Well, I'm trying to either get turned into a vampire, bang the vampires, or... Working all those. Welcome on in, Raiders. Um, I have already played through once and I have failed. So we're trying again. Maybe I'll have better luck this time. And also just a content warning for everyone who's just joined us. It is an 18 plus game. While there are no graphic sex scenes, it does have themes of kink and BDSM. Potential death if you fail, aka you died. And also a little mind fuckery because they're vampires, you're a human. So just so you are aware, in case that's not your bag, feel free to leave. Not because I don't want you here, but because I want your comfort. So yes. I'm also narrating up to a point, because at some point we do get voice dialogue. But hello, my name's Cypher. Welcome on in. I take a deep breath. Uh, I gave myself the name Colleen Hawk. I told the game I have gray eyes, she, her pronouns. You do get to pick your pronouns in this game. Uh, I'm Colleen Hawk and I'm going to have a good night. And darn it, people like me. If only my therapist could see me now. A positive affirmation to start my... Wait. Is it night? Morning? The time between times? 
Normally, when this disjointed sleeping pattern curses me, I either read my old collection of goose flesh books for the hundredth time or write for my website. The singularly most interesting thing about me is that I've cradled and nurtured a cryptid blog with a nice level of internet fame. Ghostin is my main source of serotonin and started out as a tiny forum, an avenue to find and cultivate friendships with those who love the strange and unusual as much as I do. It still serves the same purpose now, but on a larger scale. Mingling still happens, the original forums are active as ever, but I had to get creative and produce different types of content in order to keep myself afloat in this economy. Wow, if they ain't a fucking mood. Jesus. Game come for my throat before I meet the vampires. My review of Where Are the Werewolves goes up later today, and I also need to upload that How to Track Bigfoot video. The Crown Jewel of Ghost is also overdue for an update. It's an erotica section lovingly dubbed the Cryptic Coitus Corner, and it surprised me to see it become the most popular part of the website. Clearly, my character has never met monster fuckers or the people that played Mass Effect and romanced everyone but humans. I'm, I'm just saying. And Akash. Uh, one of the writers uh, wrote Akash, and I have a copy. I've just yet to play and stream it, so I need to do that. So these are all posters for games they've all done. I'll admit I'm no Bill Shakespeare, but it warms my heart to see people coming back from my wide and varied selection of supernatural erotica. Who knew that hor horny horror was like catnip to people all over the world and not just me? Also, they've never seen the Black Dice Society and the way people act about our characters. Unfortunately, I'm stuck on my latest would-be masterpiece and all I have is a potentially questionable title. I'm not reading this out loud, just so you all know. There it is. I'm not reading that. Just feast your eyes until I tap, until I hit the enter key. I'm leaving that for you all to enjoy while I take a sip of RC. And it came in the OG can, so. I'm particularly savoring this because it's like the old style cans that you really can't get in many places. It's a work in progress. It certainly is. I wave it off. I'll figure it all out later and update Cryptic Coitus Corner when inspiration hits. If I just refuse to read it. I can't. I lazily scan my room, trying to hit that motivation jackpot when I pause on my window. The moon is full and bright against the starless sky, an excellent setting for some ominous entertainment. Hello, we love the corpses. Hmm. Maybe I need to get out, go for a walk, see what early morning Portland offers me. Early morning Portland offers you some weird shit. There's enough weirdness happening during the day in the city. I'm sure something's bled over into the twilight hours. With my mind made up, I mosey over to my closet. What does one wear for a witching hour shawl? Uh, last time I picked comfort is key. This time I'm going all black like my soul. I'll be as dark as the night that surrounds me. I find my favorite band shirt crumpled on the ground and give it a customary sniff. Make sure it's clean before slipping it on. Wow, Melissa, wow. Can you throw that in Discord as well, please? I pair with my fave black jeans and boots and I'm good to go. I pose in front of the mirror, blow and kiss to mirror Colleen. I'm good. I'm a little buzzed with excitement as I gather my bearings. The most radical thing I've done lately is quit my gray tone office job and pick up shifts at a local coffee shop to supplement the income from my website. It's comforting knowing there are others like me who have this undeniable attraction to the things that go bump in the night, despite the monotony of my day to day. 
It's easier to exist when you blend in and squirrel away any untoward interests. It wants awkward conversations and no one's caught onto my deep dark secrets. Yet. There was a time where I felt that my desires for the supernatural were something to be ashamed of. I would say my desires for the supernatural, where exactly are we going with this game? I know exactly where we're going. Let's just follow along. Well, maybe there are in polite society, but after I spent too many brain rotting hours in an office cubicle, I decided I would lean to the delusion to bring some color back into my life. Most people don't see the value in that sort of thing, and that's fine. But I can't help it. Something about the occult excites me more than anything else. It's always been that way. I gave up trying to fight it a long time ago. I shake the thoughts from my head. It's no use thinking about that now. I have some inspiration to look for. I grab my phone, my wallet, my house keys from my desk, and give my room a once over, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Then, with the final flash of finger guns to my reflection in the mirror, I'm out. It isn't long till I find myself standing outside the house. 6969 Dead End Drive. Okay. Nice. It's creepy and old, and no one actually knows who owns it. And right now, it's luring me in. Normally, I pass them by. I pass by on my walk to the coffee shop, and during the day, it gives give it no more than a fleeting thought. Maybe it's the desperation for a crumb of inspiration, but tonight, I'm intrigued. The years I thought it was totally abandoned, the windows all covered with what looks like scraps of newspaper. What gives me pause is the front yard. It's too well kept. I'm also going to save for this one. Those bushes don't tend to themselves. Like every historic neighborhood. There's always that one house that has a particularly bad reputation. And this gothic beauty is it. I've heard all the stories, I count them on my fingers. Which is who eat children? An axe murderer who slaughtered their whole family. A pack of feral stray cats overthrowing the previous owner. A lycanthrope's hideout. My personal favorite. Vampires. I always thought it was a joke to scare away kids. Stop them from playing on the lawn. But... Uh, if only were true. I find myself just standing there staring. Tempted by the house and what might linger inside it, which isn't the smartest move. In October. In the Pacific Northwest. It's dark, I'm cold, and it's definitely about to rain. I should go in. The words fall out of my mouth without thought, just pure impulse succumbing to the mystery tugging in my curiosity. Anatomical topiaries. I should get that reference and I'm blanking out on it. I shrug to myself and look around. No one's here to witness my petty crime of breaking and entering. With my journalistic integrity intact, I tell, I will myself to stroll up to the house. The porch groans. Ah, uh, okay. The porch groans loudly in protest as I step on it, and my hand reaches out for the front door. I apply gentle pressure, and the door just swings open with a deliciously spooky, slightly terrifying creak. That's not what I expected. This is just left ajar like that. Damn. I was very prepared to take the lock picking skills I picked up from all the video games I played. Which totally would have worked. As the door swings open, a slight breeze flows from inside, like someone forgot to close the fridge and let out the cold. I shiver against it. And then, finally, I hesitate. Should I really be adding Trespasser to my resume? Am I actually doing this? So, let's save.
and say on second thought, let's not and see what happens. I quickly talk myself down from this wild notion of literally breaking into someone's house. And for what? Into someone's old drawers? Not even the chance of centrally shaping clay to the sound of the Righteous Brothers. The hot ghost spooning me can get me to this creepy old house. Wow, they threw that one in too. This is not a good idea, Colleen. In fact, this is literally the worst idea you've had since your MySpace layout in 2007. Jesus Christ game. What if I fall through the old rotted floor? Life alert won't be able to help me then. I oh, know. This game. And then I'll die of starvation. No one will find me. And then my corpse will get eaten by feral cats. And then... I'm out. I hastily turn away from the house on Dead End Drive and wander my way back to my apartment. What was I thinking? I scold myself as I change back into my pajamas. Brew some coffee and plop down on my desk, looking on, looking over all the updates I need to do for Ghosted. I'm still stuck in writer's block, but that's okay. I've made it through worse creative lulls. My mind floats back to the house on Dead End Drive, and I can't help but wonder what lives deep within its walls. Sadly, I'll never know. Because months later, the house went up for sale. I, oh, I'm doing something to go back by mistake. Because months later, the house went up for sale. A greedy capitalist corporation bought it, flattened it, now it's going to be turned into overpriced condos for the rich. I'm still here in my little apartment, living my ordinary life. But it's fine. My mind gives me all the adventures I need. You went home? Oh my god, the game is shaming me. The game is shaming me, y'all. The game is shaming me for going home. Okay, well, shortest game ever. Okay, then. Wow. Hope you enjoyed it. I guess. Wow. Uh, can someone allow that? Wow. Wow, game. Oh, shit. All right, so we're going back in the game. Ow. Oh my God. Welp. This game said you gonna, you gonna get this vampire loving one way or another. And since you wanna be a punk, we gonna shame you. Right, DC? Jesus. Okay, I got real scared for a second that I was late for Black Dice Society. Was Mark tweeted? And I was like, am I late? Am I late to Black Dice Society? What is Dr. B doing? Uh... Raphael, I'm already a, a member of the future class, though. Um, hold on, I'm I'm just gonna like message Doctor B. It did break the fourth wall.
Wow, my phone shamed me too. Sorry, I'm amused because Dr. B... All right, Dr. B suggested I got not I get nominated for TGA future class when I'm already a member of the future class and I'm like well What would my therapist say? He told me it'd be a good idea for me to say yes to more things in my life. This is most certainly what she was talking about. Listen, Colleen, you go into this house and you do it right now. Think of the possibilities. If there are no corporeal beings, if there will be a hot ghost, it won't it won't make me want to shave my pants. I push the door open a little and squeeze inside. It's now or never. Once I get inside the house, my teeth start shattering. It's cold. Really fucking cold. Someone forgot heating exists. I think I'm in a small foyer, but it's hard to tell because without the soft glow of the moon outside, I can barely see my hand in front of my face. Pull up my phone, turn on the flashlight, and inspect my surroundings. As I shine my light around the room, I see this place appears to be lost in time. Nothing seems to have changed since the 1800s. The furniture, the wallpaper, or the smell. I inhale deeply and catch the scent of something pungent and putrescine hidden deep within the normal old house musk. Unpleasant as it is, it's an aroma that intrigues the rest of my senses, beckoning me to find the rest of the secrets packed within these walls. At the end of the hall, I see light sneak through the crack of a half open door. Whoever's here, if anyone at all, must be in there. I hold my breath as I listen intently for clues. And sure enough, there are the signs of life that I craved. I hear what sounds like muffled conversation, then a very clear... Fuck you! I raise an eyebrow. Now this is something worth investigating. As I take another step, the floorboards creak loudly under my feet. I pause, silent as the grave and soul as a statue. Pray those muffled voices didn't hear me. There's a tense moment before the voices continue. I release the breath I was holding. Night, nice, Stephen. Thank you. Well, that is great to know, Kaylin. Please let uh, the devs know, tag for Spike Game on Twitter and let them know that. That'd be great for them to know. Sleep well, Steven. Uh, also, can I get one more shout out for Steven Kill? Um, sleep well. I hope tomorrow's a good day for you, or later today in your case. I pass stealth check. Maybe. Continuing to sneak along the dark corridor, I creep closer and closer to the illuminated room. Then I'm right outside the cracked door with my back against the wall. Now that I'm closer, I can hear them more clearly. Three. Three distinct, three distinctly different dulcet tones echo into the hallway. Do you smell that? Everything goes deathly silent. 
It smells like human in here. It freeze instantly. There it is again. I keep telling you it's your dirty cops piled in the sink. You're just as shit at doing dishes as you are playing cards. Thanks, Kaylin. At least when he sucks at cards, there's a chance he'll have to take his clothes off. Every day the cups keep piling up and not a nipple in sight. First of all, I'm good at everything. A warrior like me just can't waste his time on trivial things like cards and dishes. Gotta save my huge brain and muscles for more important things. Second... I hear the sound of someone inhaling deeply. My nose never lies. I smell human. Speaker's words hit me like a thunderbolt. What had I been thinking skulking around in the hallway and eavesdropping on whoever lives here? Could be a troop of axe murders for all I know. Have we already forgotten the time your nose led us straight into that werewolf house party? Somehow, despite the growing panic in my chest, the phrase werewolf house party makes me snort. I cover my mouth with my hand immediately as though it might somehow take it back, but it's too late. Well, well, well. We might have company after all. Go on. Show yourself. I can't describe the feeling, but it's like I'm being compelled to step from the darkness and into the light. My feet propel me forward of their own accord, carrying me around the corner as I resign myself to the fact that I've been caught. What I see when I enter the room jolts me right out of my numbness into a state of shock. Uncontrollably, my heart skips a beat. Oh, Steven left before he could have bi panic. I'll have to send him this picture on the Discord. The three voices that I heard are matched by three equally as mesmerizing faces. They're so beautiful it almost hurts to look at them. And by the look of their slightly perturbed yet also slightly intrigued expressions, I've clearly interrupted something. Using my big galaxy brain, I survey the situation and decide my next move. There's a mess of plain cards and glasses of red wine strewn across the table in front of them. The way they're holding their cards reminds me of an old spaghetti western right before there's a shootout in the saloon. Three of them stare at me in a way that makes me feel like a ham, ready for carving. None of them speak. They just evaluate me with this bizarre hunger in their gazes. I should say something to shatter this long, incredibly awkward pause. Um, I think last time I said I, I appear to be lost. Um... I'm gonna go with, I know this looks bad, but... Listen, I know this looks bad... The words are barely out of my mouth before they leap towards me at inhuman speed, knocking me out of my back and throwing me- and pu pushing me down against the carpet. The breath leaves my lungs, and my hands burn as bare skin and textile collide. See? I fucking told you I smelled human. Never doubt me again. No treat for you, just for getting it right, Elias. Dibs, really, Laurel? Can't we just share? We haven't done that in a while. No, Valeria. As the oldest, smartest, and hottest, the human is mine by right. I feel like a piece of furniture out for auction at a swap meet. Am I into that? I'm completely mesmerized by every hand movement. 
every turn of their lips, every glance in my direction as they bicker. My heart races and I can feel myself getting unnaturally hot, despite the freezing temperature of the house. Don't be greedy, Illy. Think of all the fun we could have. That's all it is for you. Fun. You do enjoy those prepackaged little blood bags, but a hunter like me needs to feed. My fangs haven't pierced flesh in so long. Biggest one has me pinned to the floor despite the threatening words. They don't exactly seem intent on killing me right this second. Even lying prone on the ground, the first thing I notice is their teeth. Or rather the deadly points of their canines. Their skin doesn't have the same plumpness or glow that mine has, almost like their capillaries forgot their refill with blood. And the mirror behind them has no reflection. No. This cannot be happening. Can it? There's no way they're actually... Vampires. Word crashes out and they turn to me hungry and forgiving Daryl. The one they call Valeria grabs hold of my chin with a delicate hand. There's nothing delicate about the way she holds me. Looks like we have a fan on our hands. It looks like they actually use all three pronouns for... No. Take that back. Mmm, it looks like we do. Mmm, it looks like we do. You interrupted us, kitten. And Ilias here was just about to take his shirt off. I mean, there's not much of a shirt there, for being honest. Taking your shirt off is for losers. And I was clearly winning. Hmm. Let him dream. I don't have to dream about winning. Winning is all I do. Look at these muscles. My face, these cards. The trio continues to bicker amongst themselves, and I just lie here, watching. Vampires are just myths. Monsters made up by confused historians and then embellished by storytellers, seeking to make us feel something. There has to be a simple explanation for these three, but now it's not the time to get myself worked up in my own little fantasies. It's probably just some sort of kinky vampire LARP event. Cosplayers who lift, or something. And I'm usually so on top of these gatherings. Those costuming and props are serious, movie magic fangs. Even red wine in their glasses look like real blood. And it wouldn't surprise me if they've rented out this house for their own pleasure. There's no way you're real vampires. Who are you? Deadly silence fills the space between us as I gracelessly interrupt their quarreling. Valeria's hand gets tighter on my chin. Ilya's body feels heavier against me. Who are we? You don't think we're real? I don't give a shit what she thinks. She'll know we're real enough when her blood is sliding down our throats. Hmm. Too much talking. Not enough killing. Ilias lunches for me at a speed that my eyes can hardly register. I'm in such a broken state of shock that I say the first thing that comes to my head. Parlay! They all pause, immediately going still as statues. They look at me with a distinct mix of disgust and confusion. Parlay? Do we look like fucking pirates to you? You are what you eat, I suppose. Yo ho ho. I'm sorry, I. Uh, is there like a vampire version of Parlay where you have to let me explain myself before you kill me? That green shit they put on your food to make it look nice? 
Parley, not parsley. It's some bullshit the human picked up from the movies. You know, parley. Clearly, Ilyas does not know. Besides, it's bold of you to assume we have anything to talk to you about, human. She could surprise you, Val. Honestly, Laurel, who hasn't eaten a ship full of sailors? Oh, now you've got me thinking about that time in Central Bay. He gives my head an idle little shake, her fingers digging into my cheeks. Making my mouth purse as she stares wistfully into the distance. Oh, pristine beaches, expensive wines, obnoxious tourists, no one will miss. As they once again continue to talk as if I'm not there, my gaze flits between their gorgeous, terrifying faces, desperate to find something I can use. All these years of memorizing books and movies and useless video games and encrypted lore has prepared me for this moment. I rack my brain for what little information I've managed to learn about these three thus far. The biggest one, Ilyas, is apparently the oldest and seems to believe he's the best of the three of them in every way. He's probably susceptible to flattery. Valeria, the most petite of the trio, seems to have a penchant for luxury if the glazed look in her eyes when she mentions San Tropez. Oh, she mentions San Tropez is anything to go by. And finally, Laurel, the hardest to read of the three, gives me the distinct impression they might be open to being entertained. I don't have much time to try whatever it is I'm going to do, so I better choose a vampire fast and go for it. Let's try to flatter Ilyas this time. I'm sorry. I just think if I'm going to die, I should be in the hands of the strongest, hottest, smartest, sexiest. I frown, I swear there's one more attribute he mentioned. Don't forget the oldest. Oldest? Hey, Sharky. Hello, hello. Uh, this is my second run. I'm trying not to die. Right, sorry, and oldest vampire here. Laura rolls her eyes while Valeria shakes her head, but Ilyas practically beams. What a smart human you are. Nothing gets past you. Anyone can figure out that the way to your hearts is through your inflated ego, darling. You're very welcome. If we're going to do this, can we at least make it interesting? Uh, they chased me. I failed to impress anybody. I chose Laurel as my attempted sire, and they were like, Lol, that's cute. You can leave. And then I got you died this whole fast talking way of a grizzly situation thing. Their tone is so unbelievably world, whereas if they've seen this situation play out again and again. They talk about my hypothetical death the same way I talk about Are You Scared of the Dark Returns? I'd rather we didn't do much more talking at all, to be honest. I'm bored. That wasn't even a hot death. It was just like, run little mouse run. But I'm glad you're here. Maybe you can help me not die. <laughs> so you just want to kill the human now because you're jealous. Oh, we have a different response here. Because before, Ilias wanted nothing more than to just eat me. And not in a fun way. What happened to those killer instincts, silly? They're still there. I'm a stone cold killer, okay? He turns his wicked golden gaze to be somehow exuding both murderous intent and boyish excitement in equal measure. But if you want to say some nice things about me again first, human. Flattery really will get you everywhere with him. The vampire still staring me expectantly now as this time the pressure is really on. Talk about his muscles. Can help but notice you have more muscles than is humanly possible. 
That's because it's not humanly possible. <laughs> Massive vampire grins broadly, peering his fangs at me while he lifts his arms in a pose reminiscent of a bodybuilder at the beach. Those old advertisements. You know the one where they kick sand to the lonely nerd. Although Anne, since you're here, can can I give you an observation slash ask a question? And also for anyone who's here, Sharky Anne is one of the developers uh, of of the game. Also, the posters that we saw earlier, Anne worked on those as well. Uh, for Laurel, are the pronouns supposed to be they, them, or he, him? Because the dialogue switches, and I don't, I'm making a hand gesture and no one can see me. And I realize there's also a picture of Prince in the back. I just noticed. I'm smart. And I'm asking Dark Yen, who is the developer who's in the chat, asking only Sharky. Think of anyone in this chat, Sharky would know. Okay. So they are supposed to be interchangeable. Okay. As someone noticed it during the dialogue in my first run, we weren't sure if it was a bug or intentional. I have as many muscles as is vampirely possible. Join the club, who should join the club. But also, Kaylin bought the game based on the stream. So. And how many is that? A lot, obviously. It's only an itch.io for now, correct? Obviously, I'm trying to romance them, but I died the first time. Well, if I have to die, I can't think of a better way to go than being crushed between those perfect arms. Oh dear. Crush me like a melon. Crush me like a melon. <laughs> you, know, you know just what I want to hear. Yeah. Wow, Panda. Wow. Hey, Brendan. Oh, for fuck's sake. Thanks. I'm putting a stop to this. His ego is already big enough. Thank you. There'll be no living with him after this. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Wow, kicking your ass at cars really worked up an appetite. Although, Sharky, uh, we all I also did the fuck this, I'm going home. And I love the fact that the game is like, you went home, excuse me. Shortest game ever. Oh, again, delusional. But the point still stands. It does feel like you've reached your expiration date sweet thing someone's a dragon age fan somehow once again these three beautiful people are arguing amongst themselves and i'm left with the moment to ponder my options there's no going back for me but maybe i can shahrazad my way through this extremely sexy scary predicament it's clear to me we'll never settle on who gets to eat me if we continue on like this. You're all just too sexy and cool as clever. And I suppose you have our answer, do you? Again, wasting time talking when we could be feeding. Aw oh, dang, I thought he was on my side. Now, now, Illy, how can we get entertainment of this caliber delivered to our doorstep? I want to see what cute little scheme she's got in her pocket. The massive vampire actually pouts. It actually hurts to be this bored, you know? I suppose we can hear a suggestion before we tear her apart. I'm a fast human, I can only keep this you from your throat for so long. 
Okay, well, I was thinking maybe I could ask you through a couple of questions. Now for me to get to know each of you a little better. The way we can see who's best fit to eat me? You're holding Ely and I back for a fucking job interview. I haven't had a job in... Oh, my phone is just now telling me I had a message. He frowns, his eyes squinting, mouth opening, closing. He just be thinking particularly hard about something. He raises his hand and looks to be counting on his fingers, but he gives up after a few moments. You're so welcome. Enjoy. Happy release day. Um, once I'm done, feel free to grab the VOD if you'd like, uh, Anne. Or I can download it and send it to you if you'd like to make some clips from it. Long fucking time, and I'll be damned if I start now. Laurel inhales and exhales quietly, and of a smile on his perfect purple lips. <sighs> Absolute treasures, aren't they? Keep talking. Have a good night. If they really are the creatures of the night they claim to be, I'd better continue to think fast. I've survived this far and went alone, and I can't let it fail me now. Maybe confidence is key here. You're going to make that, aren't you, Addercap? Or you have made it. So, I said last time I'm still not convinced you're real. I'm going to try I'm an expert on your kind and see what they say. I've been waiting my entire life for this moment. And this is it. This is my chance. I'm practically an expert on your kind, you know? Oh, is that so? Then you already know we can't let you live. <laughs> And that we're hungry. In tandem, they all show those murderous pearly whites. Well, shit. Okay, Ilias. Calm down there, buddy. I should have thought this through, but it's too late now. I just let it happen. Wave the white flag, if you will. Smirk and all of a sudden I can't seem to track their movements as they take hold of me. Well, this may be a short run. My mind is clouded, my breath shallows, my heart rate decreases. And then I feel my body being led. Larry's cold fingers are tightly curled around my wrist, and laurels are intertwined with my other hand. It would almost be intimate if it wasn't a prelude to my death. They lead me to the couch and sit me right in Ilya's lap, my back leaning flush against his ample chest. Laurel and Valeria take their spots next to him, both still holding my hands. I spread my arms like an angelic marble statue. The position is holy, and yet the deed is dripping in sin. I hear a giggle, and two full then two pairs of full lips are brushing over the soft skin of my inner wrists. Sharp daggers pierce my flesh there, thinking right between the delicate bones. They're feeding on me with each slow pump of my heart. Blood leaves my body and flows into their hungry mouths. I'd almost forgotten about Ilias behind me, when a third set of fangs embed themselves deep into the juncture of my throat. There's nothing gentle about Ilias, not like the other two. He's pure animal. A monster. <laughs> I don't think I have much life left in me. The sharpness settling in my lungs that makes it hard to breathe. And there's just acceptance. Worth it. Close my eyes and let the darkness just take me. Totally worth it. 
Huh. Oh, there's like 26 ways to die. So what do you all think? Uh, do you want to chat about it? What do you want to do? I'm not going to switch games. What I'll do is I'll turn on the camera and we can chat for a little bit. Okay, let me switch to chat intermission and then exit the game. All right, we're back. Let me switch over to just chatting. Um, we failed to bang vamps. But hey, we got 24 more deaths to go. All right, we have switched over. Right? I mean, the game just came out today. I clearly don't know what to do to convince any of them yet. I've only tried to do two runs. Now, I'm, I'm also wondering if having they, them pronouns makes Laurel respond to you any differently? I don't know. Because I was hoping, I, like whatever choice I made, it also just kind of... Also... I feel like my camera's t like slowly tilting away from me. Like it was straight ahead and now it's like slowly listing that way. But as you see, there's 26 ways to die. Yeah. I don't know. I can't hear myself. I can't hear myself. I don't know why you're getting audio issues. People have reported that there were problems, but I haven't changed my audio. Not sure why it's doing that for you. Um, as if you're the only person having that problem, then it's you. But I'm not monitoring my audio, so I can't tell you. And I'm not running through a capture card straight through my mic, so. The camera has nothing to do with it. My mic, my audio is going through my mic. The camera is literally just the video. So it's if I was going through a capture card. You know what? If it's going to be that big of a deal for everyone to mention it the minute I switch to just chatting and just call it because I don't know why it's doing it. I'm not monitoring my own audio and I can't hear myself. So, well, it's apparently a big deal because that like five people have now mentioned it. So... Yes, but I care as a streamer because now apparently it is an issue. So, I'm not monitoring my own audio. I'm not sure why there's a delay. There should not be a delay because I'm talking into a mic that's less than a foot from my face. So... 
literally the mic can't get any closer to me unless I eat the mic. So I'm not sure. So if there is some weird delay, I don't know what's causing it because it's my audio is going through the mic. Plus it's an OBS thing that's a problem. And I don't know why there's all these audio options on. I did not turn them on in OBS, so that must be on by default. No, I was just playing to see who I could um, to see who I could try to work with because the game just came out today. I was trying to figure out who was who and what I could do. I don't care about the SL OBS conversation. I don't really care about it right now. I also, I didn't ask for audio tips, so. I don't use slobs. I, I have it installed as a emergency backup plan. So. That's not an issue here. Well, if anyone wants to play the game, I'll get you the itch.io link, and then I'm going to go have a very late dinner because now I'm annoyed. Let me find you a link. And I can go from there. So bear with me, I'm just trying to grab a link and then I'm going to go have a late dinner. You're welcome. I'm going to clean up the VOD, put it out. Um, there's a tweet, so go enjoy it. It's 10 bucks, only available on itch.io. And I will talk to you later. We're going to find someone to go raid, so hang out for a hot second. Uh, Betty Nix is on. Let's see what she's up to. She was in chat earlier today when I streamed before my meetings. What? Oh, I misspelled Betty next. Um, so if you're a sub, use your high emote. If you're not a sub, use your high how do you what you have. Tomorrow's up in the air because while I don't have a lot of meetings, I have a lot of work to do. Yeah, but there will be Black Dice Society. It is our end of year episode. We are doing a holiday episode later in December. 
before Christmas, some week before Christmas. And uh, tomorrow, if you've been watching since episode one, you'll finally find out what happens on the night of the wedding of Desmond's brother and Nika. So if you want to see how things said in motion episode one started, come by. But now let's go see what Betty Nix is up to. I'm out. Have a good night.